God says you're a chain breaker. You're a chain breaker. You're a giant slayer. And it doesn't matter what you're going through or how you feel. You are a giant breaker, a, a, cha a chain breaker, a giant slayer. No enemy that comes before you shall be able to stand. They shall fall at your feet. So dance, daughter. Dance. That is your calling. Dance. You're a chain breaker. As you twirl the east, the west, the north, and the south, chains will be broken. You're a giant. Amen. Break the chain. Yeah. That's the word of the Lord. Amen. It doesn't matter, honey. Because it's through your sacrifice. Right. Oh my God. It's through the tears. And it's through the pain that God honors. He honors the heart that you have. He honors that. You're a giant slayer and a chain. said that you are a gift. He said no matter what you're going through, no matter what you see, you are a gift to the body. And he says that you are meant to come up here and minister to God. He wants you to use those emotions and use those feelings and express it fully in your ministry of things. Just let it, let it all go. He said the next time you come up here, it was an explosion today, but it's going to be an atomic bomb because you're going to let it all go. You're going to let it all go. That stuff is in you. It's going to come out. It's going to testify to millions of people. He said that you're a gift. Don't you ever deny it. I bind any other spirit that will try to speak to your mind. Any kind of spirit that will try to speak to your mind. That you are not a gift. You are a beautiful gift of God. No matter what the enemy is trying to say in your mind, no matter what he's showing you in any way, God says you are his gift. And you are meant to express his glory and his grace and excellence and beauty. Amen.
So as we uh, pull our shelves in the place to receive from you, uh, we welcome you, Comforter. We welcome you, our Shepherd, my God. Oh, Rakatin Rashanata. And we dispel any, anything that does not belong to you in the atmosphere. And we take authority over it, oh God, and your people to receive you. Uh, directly from your throne this morning uh, in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus uh, in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we receive the name we receive the name you know God is just speaking so many things to us in this day and this time and giving us an ear to hear what God is saying hear and obey and do uh, as I spent time with God this week, He spoke many things, speaking many things into my spirit concerning Christ United Church. And one of the things He said, indeed, that there's a season where He's pouring oil into our lamps. Come on, receive, receive that. He's pouring oil, and oil into our lamps. Hallelujah. The oil that comes from His throne. Amen. Hallelujah. He says that there's a season where He is. Reconnecting is a season of reconnection. Hallelujah for those. Uh, there's some of those that have disconnected God. So there's a season uh, of reconnecting. And uh, uh, God says, the, don't 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 look at the world and see all that's going on and be disturbed. God said, do not be disturbed by what you see in the news and what's happening. Don't be disturbed. I spoke about these things. Don't be disturbed or don't be deterred, but stay connected to my voice, says God. For this is the hour, says God, where I am gathering my sheep. This is the hour where the shepherd is gathering his sheep. And that there are sheep from other part pastures that might not look like us, act like us, be like us. But God said, this is the hour I am gathering my sheep. And as you look on the world stage and you see things happening, remember that this is the hour I said that I'm gathering my sheep, says God. This is the hour I'm gathering my sheep from all over here. This is the hour that I raise the volume of my my voice to my people says God and as according to my word he said my sheep know my voice says God and this is the hour says God that I am sharpening even the ears of my sheep to tune in to my voice says God God says do not be worried do not worry yourself pray but do not worry says God Pray, but do not worry. Don't look and take on the, 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 all the news and all the stuff that's coming at you. I told you, be ye comforted for a goal to prepare a place for you. Settle your spirit, says God. Settle your spirit. Oh, Shabbati. God says, settle your heart. Settle your spirit in me. For I got you, says God. I am your great shepherd. I am your great shepherd, says God. I am your great shepherd. Settle yourself in God. Follow my voice, says God, for my sheep know my voice. Set to your heart. Be not intimidated or worried with what you see or with your eyes, says God. For I am God. I am. I am. Would you give God praise for his word this morning? Be comforted by the Lord. Be comforted. I am with you, says God. I am with you. Hallelujah. Let's see what we can attract from the Word of God today. There's so many things that God has released to us. How many of you enjoyed the service of last Sunday? Woo! Did God speak to us? He spoke to us and He continued to remind us that He's with us. Today I want to speak to you in regards to one of the things that God spoke to us earlier in the year where he said that I'm fighting for you. God said I'm fighting for you. He told us that at the beginning of the year. He says I hear of unprecedented, it's an unprecedented, I hear of unprecedented favor, I hear of freshness. He spoke to us earlier in the year. He spoke to us that he is creator God. He's not stuck creating. Come on now. Tell you what God is creating a miracle for you right now. God is a creator. He hasn't stopped. Did he retold us he didn't stop creating? 
creation didn't stop in the garden. Your God is still a creator. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we tap into the creator. And if we need something to be created, we need a new kidney, we need a new heart, we need a new liver. Hello, somebody. It's still an all my God. I need somebody that I need people that believe the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm at a place where the word is it. I don't know about I don't know where you at. I, I, whatever the word say is it for me. I, I've been true enough to understand that the word, he exalts his word along with his name. I know we have been told that the scripture says that we are going, he, he exalts his word above his name, but that's not the true translation. The true translation says that he, uh, he, uh, he, what, he, what? he exalts his word along with his name. In other words, because of how my name is exalted, my word is backed up by the power of my name. Are you here? So I understand that I live by the word of God. The Bible says that man shall not live by bread, oh come on now, by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth. I tell you, every morning I wake up for a word. I need a fresh word from God. Do you need a fresh word from God? Do you need a fresh word? I, I don't know what I need. I said I need a fresh word from God. Hallelujah. So I'm at a place in my life where the word is it. I don't want to come. If that's your place, tell me but the word is it for me. Come on. If that's where you're at, tell me the word. Ah, Reba Shokutu, Rapa Pabi Kanama, Shanabado Shikiti. I say the word is it for me. I say the word is it for me. My direction comes from the word. I will lean not on my own understanding, but I'm going to lean on the word of the Lord. Anybody lean on the word? Of the Lord today. You read on you lean on the word, and as you lean on the word, you're leading on his name. And the last time I look at my Bible, it says that his name is exalted above every other name. So I lean on the word and I lean on his name. I said I lean on the word and I lean on his name. Ah, Because I would not be moved if I lean on the word and I lean on his name. Ah, let's get to the word this morning, will we? God says he's fighting for us, and this morning I want to talk to you about where our war, fear, or our battle, or our giants are slain. Our giants, our battle, our wars are won first in the heavens, and then we see the manifestation on earth. And today I want to share with you a great principle that would help us understand this. Can you please turn to our foundation scripture and let's allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us today. Apostle Val sends her love. She misses you. Hallelujah. While she's there, God is doing miraculous things with her, but she sends a love and lets you know that she loves you and she misses you all well. Can we read the scripture 31 to 3? Afterwards, Samuel took a stone and set it upright between Mizpah and Seth. He named it Ebenezer, explaining the Lord, come on, I need to hear the what? The Lord has helped us. Come on now, to this point. Can we read that again? The Lord has helped us to this point. I don't don't know what point you are in your life. I don't know what the point is, but you need to know where you are at this point, the past, the only reason why you came to this point, come on, help me this morning, is because what? The Lord has helped us to this point. Come on now, come on. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Come on, come on. I, yo, yo, I get excited about that because sometimes you know we don't. We think that the reason why we're here is because of our education. The reason why we're here is because we were smart. The reason why we're here is because we make the right decision. But I am here to tell you today. The only reason why you're here to this point. The only reason why I'm here to this point. Somebody better give God praise for bringing you to this point. Somebody. Oh, some people that need to make it to a point. The only reason why you're here at this point is because the Lord brought you to this point. Come on, tell you about The Lord brought you to this point. And despite where you at this point, God brought you here. Why are you going to be so excited? All right, next verse. 
One, two, three. So the Philistines, who was, was subdued, did not invade Israel's territory again. The Lord's hand was against the Philistines all of Samuel's life. Can we read that again? One, two, three. So the Philistines were subdued and did not invade Israel's territory again. The Lord's hand was against the Philistines all of Samuel's life. Uh, is, is it possible to put that in the... Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, that's a good version. That's a good version. Amen. So, we want to talk to you today about your battles being won in the heavens before you see the manifestation of here. I want to talk to you about that today. In order for us to continually be successful as a giant slayer, we must understand this principle. And what I love about God is that God doesn't allow us just to speak based on our own understanding and give you revelations that are not backed up by his word. But what I love about God is that when God puts you to speak a word, you're not speaking out of your own experience, but it's backed up by his truth. Yes, sir. Amen. I don't know about you, but I, I, I can't, if you can't show me the word, I can't really believe you. I, I don't know about you, but I, I, the word, I just said I'm leaning on what? The word, and what else? Jesus, and his name. Come on, you got to do this. Week. Come on, say I'm leaning on his word, I'm on his word. and I'm leaning on his name. You will need to do that. This, I guarantee you, one day this week, you will have to remember that. You will have to remember that. Come on, so I'm leaning on this what? I'm leaning on this word. And I'm leaning on this? Name. And I'm not leaning on my own understanding. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 The Bible said, don't lean what, on your own understanding, but lean on what? The word and what? His name. Tell me, tell me if I'm leaning in the right direction. I'm leaning in the right direction. So we trust the word of God. Now the very phrase I am slayer, and we, we actually derive that phrase from the one and only giant slayer, the first giant slayer that we know in scripture. Uh, or the one that really causes a coin that phase and it was King David. Are you with me with that? You agree with that? Yeah. Everybody know about David killing the light. In fact, I don't know if you, when you were small, there was a, when I was younger, there was a, a, a cartoon, but not a cartoon, they had like a, 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 a show, but the guy wasn't a cartoon, but some kind of puppets they used, and it was about David and the light. Anybody ever seen that? Yeah. Yeah, you know what about that? They showed that in the Bronx? Praise God. <laughs> David, yeah, 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 we saw that, yeah. So, so, the, so David and the light is very popular. But, the, the truth is, uh, as, I, as I said, uh, it came from King David. Uh, the Holy Spirit corrected me and said, no, it was David. Because understand, before he was king, he was already a giant slayer. Uh, come on, you help me out this morning. I said before he was a king, he was already a giant slayer. You see, it's important for us to comprehend and embrace this as a people because guess what? Some people believe that success just happens. Go on now, come on. Some people believe that, 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 that it just happens. Uh, uh, David, uh, we look at him being a king, but I don't understand that before he was a king, uh, come on now, he was a giant slave already. We, there are people that, 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 that think that success just happens and, and they say things like, you know what? Hey, I could be a king tomorrow if I want to. If I desire it enough, if I decree, I declare, and I claim it, I can be it. I can be a leader, a, 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 a king. I could be a great performer on Broadway. I could be the next LeBron James. If I could believe it. If I could declare it. But the truth is, this is 
is false. Oh, I'm trying to help somebody this morning. Put up that phrase for me. They can what? Read that for me, please. They can do what you do and be who you be without doing what you did. They can't. I mean, that's can't, right? They can do. They can't do what you do and be who you be without doing what you did. That's can't. Could you correct that for me, please? Thank you, baby. Come on, I need you to read that. Come on. Uh, uh, they can't do what you do and be what you be unless they do what you did. I know it's a thorn prison, but I, 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 we're going to get it. We're going to keep saying it until you get it. We're going to keep saying it until you, you get it, alright? Uh, they can do what you do and be what you be without doing what you did. You see, there are people that want to do what you do, but they don't want to do what you did. Come on, now help me out a little bit. How do you get excited by watching these people doing great things? You want to be like my Kobe Bryant, but then you don't want to do what he did to be who he is. Kobe Bryant got up 4 o'clock every morning and went to the court to practice one shot for three hours. Are you willing to do what he did to be who he is? And that's one of the fun. that's one of the, the, the things I see in our people and in the, in the body of Christ. We want to claim stuff, but we don't want to do what they did to have what they have. My goodness. We look at Jesus. We look at great men and women in the Bible. And we want to be just like them. But my question is, are you willing to do what they did? Ask it about, are you willing to do what they did? I know you have all kind of plans, vision for success. I know it. And you could drop out your whole dream in a second. But are you willing to do what somebody else did to get to that? Knowledge without application results in unfruitfulness. Knowledge without application results in nothingness. So you can have all the knowledge about what to do, but if you don't get it, she broke on the heart. You're not going to have it. Tell me, it's time to do it, please. Tell him. It's time to do it. Would you just did it? Do it? Come on, tell him. Would you just did it? Tell him. Did it? When you go to it, stop talking about your dreams and what you're going to do if you ain't going to do it. Come on, now. I, I know I'm in the house. Because some of we believe as believers, we just get a word from the Lord and we lay back and it's going to happen. Come on now, let me help you out a little bit. If you don't do it, you're not going to have it. Tell me, well, you better did it to do it. You see, this is one of the reasons why the five virgins miss the coming. The Bible said there were ten virgins, right? You remember that scripture? You got to stay diligent if you want to acquire anything in life. You can't talk success and take out diligence from it. I know you admire King David, but before he was King David, he was a giant slayer. Yes. Did you get anything from that? Yes. Tell me when it's time to work. It's time to do it. Tell them it's time to do it. Tell them don't stop sitting down. Stop sitting down and time to do it. What do you want to do in life? Who are you looking at to do it? You expect to get the end without getting in? What do you do? You think it'll just come out of it's just gonna happen like yes, you, you go pray for your one day, still got it again. It doesn't work like that. If you have a seed in your hand, you have a seed, right? And the seed has all the potential in the world. Come on now, you have someone call your hand, say I have the seed. I have the seed. 
I have the seed. Now, this seed that I have here, come on now. This seed that I have in my hand has the potential to yield a whole uh, 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 farm for me, a whole, uh, uh, what do you call it, a whole, a whole plantation. One seed that, that I have in my hand has the ability to give me a field of fruit for the rest of my life and my family. Right. I say, I got the seed. Yes. Come on, say, I got the seed. I got the seed. I got the potential. But unless you plant that seed in the ground, you ain't getting nothing. So tell your neighbor, plant the seed, please. Now, the scripture goes on to talk about, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, it talks about how David, and, and you know the scripture, we're not going to go into lengths into that. It shows how David destroyed the lion. How he, uh, you know the whole story, how he, it was his brothers in the field and he came in and he didn't take it. They tried to put on his, their armor on him and he didn't receive that armor and all that kind of stuff. You know that. And from 40 to 51, uh, there's some verses that, uh, that stood out to me to help me understand where David's mind was. And it's 1 Samuel 17 and 45. David said, Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee, come on now, in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast to fight. Then he went to verse 47 and he says, And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saved it not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. David made it clear that he understood that this battle was not going to be won in the natural. This battle was not going to be won by swords who had a big attack. This battle wasn't going to win like that. This battle was not. He, he said, yeah, you all see it as a natural. And who have the, uh, the greater armament will win. But David understood uh, that the Lord was fighting his battle. Yeah. That the Lord in the heavens, because Jesus wasn't on the earth, the Lord of the was on the earth, he understood it, that the battle was where? The battle was in the heavens. I said the battle was in the heavens. And David understood that. And that's what's the strength. He didn't win the battle because of his fierceness, because of his faith, because of uh, the weapons that he used. But he won the battle because he understood uh, that the battle was already won in the spiritual realm. How many times do you read in scripture where they would ask, Lord, should I go up? Why do you think he's asking that? Because he understand if the Lord ain't with the battle up there yet, you don't make a move. Come on now, come on now. So he has to connect up the corner. Should we go up now? Because sometimes God might delay a battle because he wants to move and strategically put some things in place. You see, don't worry when you feel like that God is not. Sometimes we feel like God ain't moving fast enough. Come on, talk to me. Sometimes we feel like God is not moving fast enough. But we don't understand that while the warfare is going on, there is an advantage that he wants you to have. And if he doesn't, if he pin the bell for you now, there's some things you wouldn't get. So why? God is saying, not yet, not yet, not yet. And we're ready. Oh my God. Let it happen now. Let it happen now. God is doing something in the heavens that you can't see with your natural eye. There's territory. He said, no, wait, let them push a little further. Because I want to give you more. Tell you what God said, He wants to give you more. God is fighting for us. I said, God is fighting for you. Amen. David understood this principle very clear. Why did David understand this? How did he learn this? That takes us to one of the greatest principles that I 
have learned as a leader. And it's found in that scripture, a foundation scripture of Buddha. I'm almost done. Go to verse 13. And instead of the Philistines, I want you to put your enemies there. Let's read one to three. So my enemies, come on now, were subdued and did not invade my territory. Come on now. Again. Oh, Shatara, Come on, read the line there. One more time. So my enemies were subdued and did not invade. My territory again. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're not excited like me. I, I, I'm gonna read it again. Come on, read it. So my enemies were subdued and did not invade my oh shakata my territory again. Yeah. Oh shakata, why was the enemies of Israel? Not able to come against them. Not able to, to, to subdue them. Not able to come into their territories. It's found in the next verse. Yes. That next verse. The next right verse. underneath. <laughs> Read it. The Lord's hand was against the oh Lord Jesus. Wait, 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 wait. Let me finish that. Let me finish that first surgery. Not only was my enemies subdued, my territory protected but the Lord hands was constantly against my enemies why why because of someone's life
uh, when uh, the reason why they had success is because when the man of God said, this is what God wants to do, they obeyed. Somebody say application. application. They applied the word of the Lord. Come on now. They saw him as one, as a teacher, they saw him as one that was connected to God to help them have victories. So they didn't have a problem. Tell them you must listen to your teachers. I know you tell your children that, but will you tell yourself that? Uh oh. Uh oh. I always tell you. Here goes one. Listen to that to you. My mommy, daddy, they talking. I don't care what they say. Listen to that. You listen to that. So the Bible said, verse 4, so Israel removed the Baals and Asherahs and only worship the Lord. Tell you, it's only him that deserves your worship, right? <laughs> verse 5, Samuel said, gather all Israel and Mitzvah, and I will pray to the Lord on your behalf. Wow. Oh, shadow say. The reason why, I think I'm going to head on myself here, but I want you to get it. <laughs> he was an intercessor. Samuel was a prayer warrior. Samuel was the one that interceded for the people. Oh, shut up, my sacred thing. The Bible says, when they got out of they drew water and poured it out unto the Lord in the Lord's presence. They fasted that day and there they confused. They confess, I'm sorry. We have sinned against the Lord. Repentance, repentance is a part. It's always a part. Somebody, you gotta repent, you gotta repent. And Samuel judged the Israelites at Mizpah. Verse 7. When the Philistines heard that the Israelites had gathered in Mizpah, their rulers marched up towards Israel. Isn't that like the enemy? We just saw it portrayed. While you're celebrating a holy time on a holy event. We're going to attack you. They saw that at a time. Because they know at that time, if, if you're fasting, you're weak. Come on now. You ain't want to fight, don't fight when you fast. And I'm praying and stuff like that. Hey, hey, hey. So we're going to attack you while you're weak. Verse 8. The Israelites said to Samuel, Don't stop crying out to the Lord God for us. They said, don't stop crying out for us. You pray for us. And to see for us. What did they see in Samuel? That they trusted that his prayer would do something for them. They said, Samuel, cry out to the Lord for us. And to see for us, because we know you got a connection with God. God listens to you. I say, God listens to you. Oh, Jesus. The Bible says, verse 9, then Samuel took the young lamb and offered it as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. He cried out to the Lord on behalf of Israel, and the Lord answered him. Samuel was offering the burnt offerings. While he was interceding, worshiping, praying, and offering, the enemies was coming. Look what the Bible says. The Lord thundered and loudly, thundered loudly against the Philistines that day and threw them into some confusion. Oh, right now I said confusion to my enemies. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, I send confusion in the camp of my enemies. Roko Shakata. Come on, somebody pray with me right now. If you believe that, we declare and we send confusion into the camp of our enemies. Roko Shakata. While we intercede, while we pray, while we worship, we send confusion against our enemies right now. Send them in disarray. Go 
allow them to be confused. Uh, when they stand, cause them to speak uh, garbage. Uh, let garbage come out their mouth. Uh, let them babble without sense. Uh, I declare uh, that we send confusion uh, and then push them against our enemies. As a leader, Samuel understood not just his position or his title as a high priest and judge, but he understood his role was to be a prayer, an intercessor for God's people. Watch this. He understood that as he intercede for the Lord's people, that the Lord will always be against the enemy. intercession, he would allow the Lord's hands to be against the enemies. Anybody need the, the hand of the Lord to be against your enemies right now? Yes. Oh, Rabbi Shem. He understood that as long as he stay interceding for God's people, the Lord will subdue his enemies. The Lord will bring his enemies into subjection. I said Samuel understood. Watch this one. Samuel understood that through intercession that territories and borders are established. Come on. Oh God. Oh God. Rashi kete. And in the sense you understand that there's a territory and there are borders. So when the Lord will allow you to go into another territory, but He's going to give you a territory and cause you to establish the borders of that territory with intercession. You want to know why a lot of us didn't die? Come on. Come on. You really think it was your skills on the highway that the bridge and car from the traffic, from the accident? Intercession. Establish territories and borders. You understood that? Intercession establish protection. We have many leaders today who are hung up on titles. But the truth is, oh my God, we got to know our roles as leaders, as apostles, as pastors. In one of our main positions is to be intercessors. Come on now, you better pray with me this morning, please. Pray with me this morning. <laughs> I would say to you, if you have a leader that don't pray, my goodness, I'm just saying, how shall be in your muscle? You have prayer meeting after prayer meeting. And your leader eating fried chicken somewhere. Raman so, come back, they say. I confess to you today with the understanding my life of prayer has changed. Can I confess to you? Yes. Because I'm getting greater understanding. I understand that an hour is not enough. Yeah. Two yeah. hours is not enough. Yeah. Three hours ocean. Is that enough to continue to establish the territories for your lives? Okay, 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 okay. Now this same Samuel is who anointed David. And David knew exactly who Samuel was. David knew that Samuel was interceding for him. I venture to say to you before David went to see Goliath, Samuel was interceding. The only reason why David won was because of Samuel's intercession. Don't you read it there? 
I said the reason why David killed Goliath, go back to the scripture, the Bible says, all the days of Samuel, are you thinking about David? Huh? I know you're looking at the natural, you're looking at the word free, but the word, the battle was already won in the spirit realm through the offering and the concession of Samuel. So now when you understand that, you can't miss prayer. Yeah. yeah. You show up on Sunday when I pray, you don't show up. Mm. Come on, somebody pray the Holy Ghost, please. <laughs> you don't know what your intercession is ready, prophet. Come on, church. <laughs> David won the battle already because Samuel was interceded for him. So the battle, you talk about the stone and he slinged the stone and all that kind of stuff. The stone was guided to intercession called right between his head. I said the battle was already won. In the, in the heavenlies, Goliath's head was already cut off. And I believe that David got a glimpse, so he wasn't scared. You see, when you're able to see into the third heavens, you're not going to walk in fear. In spite of what you see and what's happening, and God has brought into a place where you can see into the supernatural. Intercession was the key. This is good teaching, y'all. It, 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 it's not sometimes what we want to hear because intercession is work. Intercession is work. Intercession is putting your time on the line for somebody else. Why you also can't say pray, amen, something now. Amen. Help me out this morning. I'm teaching you a great principle here. That the battle is already won in the heavens. I want to take it a little further and a little deeper. Because under the new covenant, we have a great high priest. Come on, you know the Bible. You know your Bible. So, uh, as much as we look at David and Samuel and what transpired in the, under the old covenant, now we have a new covenant. And we have, the Bible said, we have a great high priest. You know the scriptures. According to Hebrews chapter 7, it told that he, it said that he, 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 he always lives to the Lord to intercede. Oh, my God, my show for that. To intercede for us. Our Jesus lives to intercede for you and I. He's our great. I just told you that battles are won in the heavens. I just told you that intercession is what wins the battles. And here you have our king, the high priest, who has passed through the heavens, my God, and is sitting on the right hand side and lives to make intercession for you and I. Tell you, the battle's already won in the heavens. I got a high priest in the ceiling for me. Come on, come on, you need to get the understanding. Why are you sleeping, Jesus, in the ceiling for you? Oh, shut up. Why are you worrying, Jesus? Is in the ceiling for you. Come on, you better believe that Jesus is your high priest. You better believe that he's in the ceiling for you. Why David is lying in the bed? Jesus is interceding for him. Ah, the Moshakata. We send the word right now to Mama Gina. Oh, Lava And we declare that while she's lying there waiting for the operation, oh my God, that a high priest has already interceded for her. And she is well. Nobody says she's well. She's well. She's well. Come on, this thing ain't no joke, you Ah, Shakata. Don't wait for an event. For you to become an intercessor. Don't wait for trouble to hit your room, your home, for you to intercede. You intercede before the event happens. I see you intercede. Shakato, somebody break down for you. Rekanama Shokoto. Rekanama Shokoto. Don't wait for the event. Rabado Shiki. It's one of the greatest powers we have and it's less used in the earth. Ah, 
Intercession is not promoted in the church like it should be. We promote everything else, but we don't promote prayer like we should have. Not understanding huh? that your intercession, oh, that, that, your intercession is what guarantees you victory before you even wake up in the morning. Huh? The victory is one. I told you the other morning, huh? I wake up huh? and as I open my eyes, I saw a head lying by my foot. Huh? And the Lord said to me, Darren, huh? I know you're facing some giants right now. It seems uh, like that's coming from everywhere. But I want to secure you and let you know uh, that I've already beheaded them in the spirit. Uh, I said uh, the giant's hair is already cut off. And all I want you to do uh, is see it, uh, believe it, uh, and continue to confess and it is. Somebody pray the spirit for me. God is taking us away. God talking about an explosion next year for us. It begins in intercession. Yeah, yeah. I say the explosion now begins with intercession. The explosion now begins with prayer. The time you take to worry, pray. That's what we do. So the Bible says, now, I've given you a great high priest who lives to intercede. Oh my God. Do you understand that Jesus is interceding for you right now? Do you understand that he's interceding for us? Guess what? When I intercede for you, I get tired and I fall asleep. But I have a God that never sleeps. Those numbers. Why is that? Because that they say, my God, don't wear pajamas or drink Coca-Cola. My goodness, our God never sleeps. So he's interceding for you while you sleep. He's interceding. I came to give you insight into a principle that's going to cause you to walk in victory for the rest of your life. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky for some people. Because we know that Jesus is our high priest and he's interceding for us. So some people believe that they don't need apostles. Some people believe that they don't need a pastor to tell them anything. Because Jesus, you know, we use the scripture when we want to use it, how we want to use it. And we fit it in how we want to. But the scripture said, I am seated in high places. Come on, you know the scripture. Ah, yes, and Jesus is it the seated for me. So I don't need no leaders. I don't need no pastor. I don't need a high priest. I don't need nobody to seat for me because I got Jesus. Let me help you out with a little bit. That's not scriptural. It sounds good, but it's not scriptural. The Bible says in the book of Genesis that God said, let us make man, come on, go with me, in our image and our likeness. Man. And he said, let them have. He said, no, 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 no. I'm not going to do everything on earth. I'm going to give some responsibility to man and let them come on now. And let them have. At this point, God showed his purpose was to be in partnership with man. Come on, help me on this morning. To be in partnership with man. So when you look at the scriptures, you don't see Jesus absent, absent from the leadership that he set up in his church. He's not. He said, and the Lord said in the church, and he went into the leadership. So here we are going with this. That God needs intercessors in the earth to connect with Jesus. Oh, you all have more this morning. God needs 
They did not say what's on your mind. Oh, come on now. I heard it to be bound in heaven. God needs intercession going up from us to him so that they can come together. And that you can see the results of earth. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. As the spiritual of it said, ah, don't stop crying out for us. The Bible says in Acts, and I can take you to a whole bunch of scriptures here, when the apostles and the pastors laid on their lives to intercede for the people. So if you say it, that only Jesus alone can pray for you, you're biblically, you're incorrect, theologically. Because God made a decision in Genesis chapter 1 that he's going to partner with man. Is he sovereign that he can do whatever he wants? Yes, because he's God. But he set a principle here. Even Jesus coming to the earth had to follow the principle. He had to come to Mary. God don't break his own laws. I said God don't break his own laws. So he said a partnership. Then the Bible said, I'm looking for a man. Why are you looking for a man? Because the only way you can get stuff done in the earth is through you and through me. Because of the beginning, there was an agreement. So if you don't pray, what's going to happen? Jesus interceded me and said, okay, when you will join me in prayer? When you will join me in this intercession and agree with what I'm seeing in the heavens and the earth? The Bible says, if you bind it on earth, it shall be bound in heaven. If you look on, now you know the Bible. So how dare you don't pray? How dare you say you don't need a leader to pray for you? That's not biblically correct. I feel sorry for the people who are in the wilderness that don't have pastors and leaders. I feel sorry for them. I feel sorry for them because they have no direction. Yes, I know you get from the word. I understand that. But understand that God sent leadership in the earth to help you get to your destination. Come on now. Don't get super religious in me right now. Let's look at the word. In Acts chapter 6, verse 3 and 4. Hear what, hear, what the, hear what the apostle said. Therefore, brothers, select from among you seven men of good report, full of the Holy Spirit of wisdom, who we can appoint to some this duty here. But we will devote ourselves to prayer. Oh, stop with me this one. He said, I gotta pray for y'all. He shut down everything else. Look what he said. We got to vote ourselves to what? Pray and to preach in the ministry. So I'm telling you, it's like, this is manner for me. Because I understand that your victories, my victories, is wrapped up in prayer. Somebody pray this way. And what I love about it. And I can give you a whole bunch more scriptures here. Uh, Ephesians 1 16. I do not say to give thanks to you, remember you in my prayers. I verse Philippians 1 3 4. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine. So, in other words, the apostles, they were praying and praying. They had a prayer life. You know, in the book of Acts, they say that while they was on their way to what? Not to preach, but to pray. The damsel came against them. Come on now, come on now, come on. Come on, church! It's time to pray. It's time to intercede. To secure our territories. To secure our borders. I guarantee you, you can do everything until when it's time to pray and start feeling sleepy. I guarantee you. Come on, help me out this morning. That's the truth. You can watch TV for five hours. Oh my God. Drink in and be married for five hours. As soon as it's time to pray, I sleep in and just hit you. Why? It's demonic. Yes. It's a demon. Because you understand the thing. You understand the power of intercession and prayer. You deter him. Oh, Shakata. You put protection. Oh, Rakashi. That's why you can't stop prayer. I say you can't stop prayer. You can't hold I don't care what's happening in your life, your heart, whatever the truth is. If you want to pray, it would have been worse. Yeah. 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 I told you, when I think I'm the pastor David, my mind, I was like, my God, he 
be used in a ministry on Sunday. On Sunday. And Wednesday. And I started laughing like God was going to do it. You're going to do it all kind of stuff because believe it or not, I feel you. Oh, God, I wish you. I feel your pain when you're going through stuff. We feel it. I said, we feel it. You might see it on my face, but we feel it. We feel it. I said, we feel it. And we had to see. We cry. And God said to me, said, Aaron, what if you didn't pray? That's what you're not thinking about. What if you all weren't in prayer? Do you understand uh, how worse things could have been uh, if y'all were a church of prayer and in prayer? I know you're looking at the circumstances now uh, and thinking that it's the worst, uh, but let me tell you something. Uh, it's because of your prayer. Why is that chaotic? It's because of your prayer. Oh, Shakata, my children are lying. Come on, those who pray. If you're under the sound of my voice today and you don't have a, a physical shepherd, I know we got the great shepherd, Jesus Christ. But if you don't have a, a shepherd, a pastor that's praying for you, let me tell you something. You better find a church, find a man, a woman that is a praying. Come on now, come on now. If, they, if you don't see them worshiping, you have oh, worship going on. They can sit down and do nothing. Watch them, watch them, watch them, watch them. Yes. Oh, she got a bad song. If you don't have that leader in your life today, you need one. You need somebody to come and talk to you and pray. You need someone to speak over your life and to intercede for you that you would have victories in the heavenlies. Did you get this today? Yeah. Does it make sense to any one of you today that we cannot hold back on our prayer and our intercession? It's time to take it to another level. Because the giants already conquered. But the idea of the deceiving is to see how to be. Oh my God. It's to see what steps they need to take to defeat the giant. Someone to sit down. The Lord said to me, He said, Darren, you know it didn't start with intercession and prayer. When did prayer and intercession show me that? Just ask him. Where does the word prayer and intercession show me that? After man said. He said to me, Darren, I started off with communication and communion. In other words, prayer is what God always wanted to do with us. To commune with us. To talk to us. To share with us. To show us what he's doing on the other side. What he wants to do with us. And that's why the enemy fights us not to come into his presence. Come on now. With condemnation as a person. There's therefore no condemnation for them who are in Christ. Are you, are you in Christ? You're in Christ. When you're in Christ, he said, Come boldly, come on. Before the throne of grace. So I can talk to you, man. So I can talk to you. God wants to talk to his people. It's not all about your problem. He just wants to talk. Yes, yes. As I said, the only time we talk to God is when we have problems. God said, Just come to me, please. Let me talk now. Let me talk now. Right. In the beginning, when the prayer was communion, the Bible said he came down in the garden in the day. He was going on. He wants communion with us. Can we go back to Genesis and just commune with the Father? The truth is, he said, before you even think of it, I already handle it. 
Before you even come in the prayer with me, you already in the ceiling. Just come in and talk to me. Come in and talk. I say, come in and talk to me. God said, come and talk. Come on. Just come as you are. Come. Come, 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 come. Come and talk. No, don't run away from my presence. Run into my presence. Run into his presence. Run into his presence. With all your faults, your, your misunderstandings, your different concepts, come to me. Let me come, 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 come. Prayer, intercession is what gives us the victory. So we'll stop praying for your children. We'll stop praying for your business. We'll stop praying. Right in that prayer, one day God will say, Ah, uh-huh. all right, grace, turn left, turn right. In. Right there, He will give instructions in that prayer. Come on. But if you stay outside of that, you can't know no answer. Who are you seeking my answers from? You're Googling it? Are you Googling for your answers? Or are you going to the Father to give you direction? Come on, let's pray in the Spirit. I'm going to do something quickly. We can go home after this. I want to come into agreement with the families of this house in regards to praying and intercession. So you and your family just come. I'm going to anoint and we're going to come into agreement today. Come on, come to me. Every now and then, the shepherd that anoints his people. Every now and then, he has to put a mark, oh, can I say, on his people as, as territory people that are set apart. So I want to come into agreement with you this morning in regards to being covered as we intercede. For you and your family, and you intercede for us. Come on, come on. Oh, Raka Shakata. I come into agreement. Oh, Shakata. With the heart's household. In regard. Oh, my God. In regard to intercession. That everything that they need, everywhere that they are, might be accomplished. I come into agreement today. And I see it in the name of Jesus. Oh, Raka Shakata. Come on, come on, come on, let's go, let's go, come on. Rakate, Papa, Shakato. Father, come into agreement with these families right now. Oh, God, we intercede for them, Lord God, for victory, Lord God. We mark them, we set them aside. Oh, Rama Shakata, for your purpose. Eh, Rama Shakata, that they would have victory. Oh, we set them aside. We come into agreement and we intercede. And then we have for victory. And those who declare that every mountain that stand in their way will become a plain today. In Jesus' name. Come on, say amen. Say amen. Come on. Father, we anoint this family today. And all that is there. And their purposes will come. Father, we come in agreement concerning their purposes. That your will will be done. Oh, Shakata. Father, I come against those walls. I see, I see walls of things that have been set up against this family. Oh God, and I'm praying that these walls come down today. I see part of it broken, but the rest of it needs to be broken. So I come into intercession. I come into agreement with them today that these walls are totally destroyed in Jesus' name. Oh, la, 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 la. Ah, come on, baby, give me hands. Oh, we come into agreement. We come into agreement with the Lindsay family, Lord God. Oh, God, Father, I declare, Lord God, that no corruption, oh God, will come into this family. Oh, Shakata, I declare it to close the doors, oh Lord God. Oh, Shakata, I protect this family, oh God, of any seeds of destruction, oh God, or corruption, oh God. We intercede and we declare that they will be successful in everything that you have called them to do in Jesus' name. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ah, uh, we come into agreement, we come into The Lord ministered to me about you last night. I was interceding for you. And God said, there are many nights you go to bed crying because there's a loneliness in your heart, God says. 
There's times you're crying and you're like, maybe you feel lonely, you feel by yourself. And so many people don't understand what you're going through. But God says in this season, He wants to assure you that He is your comfort. And you know it. But God wants to assure you that He's with you, Lord. God says your lonely days are almost done. God said your lonely days are almost over. Oh, we declare the joy of the Lord over your life. Hallelujah. As you embrace, oh God, I declare no sadness will come in your heart. But the joy, the oil that you gave to me, the oil of gladness. Not just a faint smile, but smiling on the inside as well. We declare it over her right now. Hey, that the joy of the Lord consumes our heart and we will see it in Jesus name I read you come we declare we come into agreement with his household for victory we come into agreement with his household concerning your promises we are to see for the Lord God and we declare that no weapon form against them shall prosper. We declare, Lord God, deliverance. We declare strength. Oh my God, we declare that the impossible has become possible for them. God said the impossible has become possible for you. Somebody better grab that, grab that, grab that. God said the impossible has become possible to you. We declare, we decree this in Jesus' name. Go to bless the Lord. Come on. Come on. Come on. God said, it's our and the time. I'm assembling some stuff concerning this family. I'm putting stuff together. There's no one fear the time you felt that you saw the building turn up, but there were parts laying on the side that didn't show, wasn't able to bring the whole building together. But God said, this is the hour that I'm assembling the building. I'm assembling the, 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 the things that I've called you to do in the earth. This is the hour I'm adding, I'm assembling, I'm putting it, I'm putting it together in Jesus' name. And we declare success in Jesus' name. We come into agreement with this Oh, Rabba Baba Shekita. Raka Devan Sobuto Papa Bishkite Rabba Baba Nike. Ripa Dakanda. I hear God say to increase your proportions. God said to increase your proposals. You all need to put more proposals out there. I don't know where you have put your proposals. And the proposals look something like this. In your prayer time, there's some things that you need to put out there. There's some things that you need to put out there in your prayer time. There's some things that you need to put out your proposals. Oh, you do him something, but there's some stuff that he has for you. But he needs you to come into agreement with him and put out those proposals. Put out the proposals. Put out the proposals. Not written proposals, but proposals in your prayer time. Proposals. Put them out. Proposals. That's what I'm here. Proposals. Put them out. Put them out. Put them out. Write them up and say, God, here it is. God say, write them and say, here, God, this is what I want. This is where I want to go. This is where I want to see my family. This is what I want And you guys, you give the proposal for both of us. God said, I will cause you to be lavish givers in the house of the Lord. God said, as you bring the increase, He's going to cause you to be lavish givers. Oh, God, I'm going to say I'm just seeing bags, bags. You know the feed bags and the feed bags. I'm just seeing bags with seeds in there. A whole bunch of bags. God said, He's going to give you so much seed that you're going to open. You can't just tore it up. You're going to have to give it away. Increase your proposal. Shakato. They're waiting for you, says God. They're waiting for you. They're waiting for you. They're waiting for you. Father, we intercede the bless this family. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for each and every one of them. We declare their destiny is fulfilled in Jesus' name. Amen. We bless you. We bless you. Families, families, everybody, come, come, represent your family. Raka na ba bolo shaka, raka tolo brasha, raka tolo brasha. Father, we bless. 
this family and to succeed on their behalf, on their mother's behalf, Lord God. Father, we declare the blessings of the Lord. We declare your mind and your heart revealed to them in the name of Jesus. God said, don't sweat. God said, don't sweat the small stuff. He said, don't sweat. Just follow my direction, said God. Just listen to my voice. He said, you don't have to sweat. You don't have to work hard. God says, he said, just follow my voice and you will have to sweat. I don't mean no exercise. I don't mean saying that. But he said, you will have to sweat if you follow his voice. Father, we have to see you the clear. The blessings of the Lord in this family in Jesus' name. Father, we declare we have to seek concerning the Lord. And we declare that in the season of alignment of your will being done, we have to see that we call upon seeds that were planted years ago that the harvest didn't come yet. We speak to that harvest. We come into agreement with her that that harvest is now. That harvest is now in Jesus' name. And she will come and tell us about the harvest. All the blessings of the Lord. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. We come into agreement with you and your children. Oh, Raka, Paradisha, Baraka, Rekhanaman, Shoko, Toto, Ah, we have to see that they're being asked. We declare that those are being offered to your children right now. Oh, that they would never lack of paradise. That the seeds that you're planting, uh, they are coming into fruition. Your children uh, will reap the harvest, uh, and you will look uh, and you will see the manifestation of God in their lives. And you will say, God, I'm glad that I served you. I'm glad that I dedicated them to you. Because you're going to see it. You're going to see it. God said, uh, they will reap where they haven't even sown. They will reap where they haven't even sown. With this word of Jesus. We come into agreement with this family, Lord. As we intercede for your mind and your heart and your way and your will. We intercede, O Lord God, and we declare victory. We declare hope. We declare that the winds have turned. We declare that the winds have turned. Ah, we declare the winds have turned. In their favor, in our favor. We declare the winds have turned. In our favor. And the winds are blowing on the trees and on the seed. And the seeds are blowing by the wind and being planted. We declare that the wind came to release the seeds. Oh, Shabra, and take it to the destination. We declare that the winds have turned in favor for this family. In Jesus' name. Come on, church. In Jesus' name. I declare, I come into agreement with you. I ain't got a choice. And I declare the goodness of the Lord over your life. As the Lord spoke to you on last night. And he said that this is a new season for you. Where he has changed your garments. And he's put a new garment on you. You're going to go into our readers and they will say, Wow, I'm sure different. Push up on the And they will try to say, But I think she lose a little weight. I think she, yeah, she probably did something. But what they're going to see uh, is actually is the glory of God. And the new garment that you're wearing uh, with this anointing. They will understand it. But God said, uh, as I give you this garment, God said there's a, 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 along with this garment, there are some rules and some laws. And I'm going to teach you those as you wear this garment. 
This garment doesn't just come upon you like that, but it comes with a way and a how to wear it. God, I'm going to give you the instructions. I come into agreement with you with regards to your life. You're well, you're fit, and you're ready to win. Jesus' name. You're with me. You're with me. Uh, I come in agreement. Oh. Oh. I come into agreement. And I intercede. Oh, What I see is a big tree. I see you as a big, strong, old tree. Standing and many has come under your shadow for shame. So it's because you're that tree that I have established to be an intercessor in the earth. But there are times where you feel like you're by yourself. But God says, I give you support to me. And what I actually saw wasn't a natural um, some structure like a tree, but I actually saw something like the Eiffel Tower right next to you that you that's going to support you to go even higher. To go and lean. When it's time to lean, you have that. To be God says, I got you. I got you. I am your support. I'm your firm foundation. I got it all planned. So rest in me. Rest in me. I continue the good work. I come into agreement with you and the household. We declare the Lord healed in the name of Jesus. We declare it's done in the heavens in Jesus' name. Come on, church. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Oh, hallelujah. Come into agreement. Oh, Shakata with a hunt. Household on God. We declare. Oh, no, I'm saying. I hear the word deployment. I hear the word deployment. And that's a word that you understand very well. You understand that word better than most people inside of you. And you know what comes with deployment. But God says, This is a deployment from heaven and your behalf. And you understand the deployment always comes not just a deployment but everything that is needed for that deployment every strategy every military and whatever is needed food every provision is sent out to that deployment and they are saying this is the hour i'm deploying from the heavens concerning your family deployment He's going to give you more insight as you think about it and continue that. Father, I come into agreement with this family, Lord God, Father. And I thank you, Lord God. As we get to see you for the Lord God, we declare that your word be done in Jesus' name. Amen. My daughter, I declare to you that this is a season and a time where I'm going to release a psalm of triumph through your belly for my people, says God. Is a sound of triumph that is coming from your belly for my people. You're going to go into auditoriums and people will be down, cast down, and from your belly will flow a word, not just of deliverance, but of triumph, says God. So get ready. Get ready. Receive the sound of triumph. The child comes out of your mouth. And I receive with you and declare the blessings of the Lord of your life in Jesus' name. Come on, put your hands together, give God some praise. Well, the time is called decision making. You heard the word, you saw the anointing, and I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you, who's the Samuel in your house? If you are there viewing, who is the Samuel in your house? The word the man of God just said, do not lean to your own understanding, but lean towards him and his understanding. If you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, 
now is the time to make a crucial decision. The reason why I use the word crucial is life threatening. The state of the world right now, if you've been waking up every morning, you've been viewing, you've been breathing, and you're not sick, there's nothing wrong with you, you still got a job. Ask yourself, how good is this God? You haven't even accepted him yet, but you're reaping all these great benefits. He's doing all this for you. Can you just imagine if you were seven today? Just imagine, where would you be if you were seven today? I know some of you guys, you might be saying to yourself, you know, I'm a good person. I don't do wrong. You know, I help people. Um, you know, I try my best to do right. I'm not evil. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm, I, 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 I'm very good to people. The Bible clearly says, your goodness, God says, your goodness. What you think, what you read them as good? That you feel your answer. That's how you come back and say, your ways are not my ways. It has to be his ways. And he said, if you love me, you're going to follow my commandments. So we have principles we have to live by. So today I want you to repeat after me. Because it's the sin you make it. It's the choice that you got to make today. I had to make that choice. And I was very happy making it. I didn't hesitate making it. Because I understand the only reason why I'm alive, the only reason why I'm breathing, the only reason I'm able to wake up, it has to be because of God. His name is Jesus this morning. There's no name ever above his name. All I had to be, all I had to be told was demons tremble. At the name. That's what I had to be told. I was like, for real? I need this God. Yeah. He's a provider. Yeah. He's a way maker. Yeah. And when I heard he does the impossible, he can make the impossible possible. Oh That's the God for me. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> There's no other God for me. And when I just put a set, that's easy. So if you've been viewing over and over, I want you to hit that like button. Share this message. Because there's many out there that needs to hear this. Amen. They need to hear this. And you know, you're going to hear things like, oh, people might say, ah, I, I found God. You can't find Him. He has to reveal Himself to you. And now He does about you accepting Him. But did I even challenge you? Ask Him, as you as you are stepping this morning, ask Him to reveal Himself to you in whatever way you would like. I can guarantee you He'll do it. I'm that I can talk to you confidently like that because I've done it. I can only talk to you for the things that I've done. Who better to tell you than the person that lives it? I'm telling you, I'm standing here today because of God. Amen. So I'm not in a convincing game. I only can tell you the truth. But I will tell you, real is rare. Faith is everywhere. So I want you to understand. So this repeat after me this morning. Say, God, Jesus, I accept you in my life. I believe that you died for me. And you paid a heavy price for me. So I could be free today. So I confess with my heart and my heart that you are Lord. You are Christ. You are majesty. You are the end that I am. You are the all in all. So that prayer this morning, the heavens are rejoicing. The angels are weeping. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. And we thank you. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God came to remind us today that our path through victory is through prayer. Amen. Our path through victory is through care. And it's amazing that God sent our apostle today to give us that word in a week that we are approaching prayer yeah. and fasting. Amen. We needed that prayer and fasting. You know, I think about if somebody wasn't interceding for me, where would I be today? Yeah. If my mother did not intercede for me, where would I be? And now that the tables have kind of changed a little bit, my spiritual parents, if my spiritual parents did not intercede for me, where would I be? 
Don't be selfish with your prayers. Yes, ma'am. Don't be selfish with your prayers. Yes, ma'am. Because just like you want someone to intercede for you, someone is waiting for you to intercede for them. Yes, ma'am. Amen. 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 So tonight we begin our prayer and fasting. And this week is our week of prayer and fasting when we will be here at the headquarters every night at 7 p.m. Are you ready to show up? Amen. I believe we're going to show up and show out this week. I believe that we're going to bombard the heavens this week. I believe signs, miracles, and wonders are going to break through this week through our interceding and our prayers as we join together as one, as one body, as one body, interceding for our families, interceding for souls to know who Jesus Christ is. Amen. 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 So I'll see you this week. And then on Friday, we have our three hours of prayer. We'll, we'll be here from 6 to 9. So be here. And as they say, be here or be square. Amen. Amen. Next year, say, Yo, I'm glad that you're here. Open this you know, just touch that, just touch that and say, Thank you. I thank God for you being in my life. Come on now. Yeah, you don't know when you're going to need somebody. Come on now. Say, Come on, say, I'm gonna, I need you. Come on, come on, I need you. Come on, I need you to intercede for me. Come on, come on. I need you to pray for me now. Come on now. We need each other. We need each other. I don't ever forget that. Your right foot needs your left foot. Uh, come on now. I need your right eye needs your left eye. Could you imagine trying to turn a corner like this? Let me turn the corner. You know you need your left eye. My right eye needs my left eye. Come on, y'all. Come on, tell them I need you. I need you. Come on, tell them I need you. You're a part of me. You're a part of the body. Amen. We want to send the word to Kaisha and the boys right now. We, Kaisha, we come and we join and proxy with you right now. We intercede for you and your family. We declare the blessings of the Lord upon your family. We declare the richness and the wealth of God. Father, we declare, I declare a turning comes to your house right now in the name of Jesus. And God says, uh, uh, that circumstance uh, is a circumstance stance and God said has caused you to take a stance that will bring victory to your house in Jesus and we bless you. We connect with all of you online. We come into agreement with you as you're part of our house and you connect with us. We intercede with your behalf. Amen. We love you. We thank God for you. Uh, would you please stand so we can be dismissed this morning. We thank God for each and every one of you who comes to you to pray. We will see you at prayer tomorrow night. Hallelujah. As we come in, we're going to see you. Uh, we want to come. One thing that we're going to be praying for tomorrow, remember, we're going to be praying for reconnection. There's a people that need to reconnect. God says, a season of reconnecting and also is a season of gathering. Amen? Amen? So when you speak to people, when you're speaking to those that you know, be that give them the word of the Lord. Give them the word of the Lord. Don't, 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 don't play around. Give them the word of the Lord. Because tomorrow is not promised to anybody. I hear the church. It's not a problem. Don't play. We know too much to play. Amen? Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this time, Lord God. I thank you for the release of your word. We feel God that your word will continue to bring life to us. We will continue to add to our lives, Lord God. We increase, Lord God. We declare that the enemy will not be able to steal this word because it came from the kingdom of God. And we thank you for your word. We thank you for this word and the session. We thank you for giving us the spirit to get to see that and to pray to know how to strengthen, Lord God, as you take us along this journey. And we thank you. I declare the blessings of the Lord. I declare increase in your life this week. I declare breakthroughs come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. I come into agreement with you. What are you praying for? And I declare that it shall be so in the name of Jesus. And let the church say, it shall be so. The blessings of the Lord. We love you. Share your love with each other as you leave this place. Hallelujah.